we're going to do a bit of kicking now sideways. I've already asked a couple of questions about that. Uh, so we're going to do a bit of pin kicking. Anyone know what that is? You probably do, just... <coughs> I can Sorry? No. No. Kicking the ball so he rolls out to pin the other team back. Nice, I like it. Fellas, no, but no. <laughs> no you're, too, you're too cryptic. Um, pin kicking is actually... We're going to work on the technique of hitting the ball square on our laces. So we just stand in front here. We'll have a mate who's standing, you know, eight metres away. And I've just got to focus on kicking the ball and flying through. And I stab it low for him to catch, and he'll do the same thing back. So I'll show you an example of that in a second. But it's a big part of how we kick. Uh, so working on that, and we'll work on transferring weight through that. We're going to work on 45s, which is um, when we're kicking, I might be on this angle, but I'm looking to kick long down this way. Or I might be sitting square, but looking to try and punch one down that corner. So I spin on a slight angle and kicking across my body here. And so what that tends to be is, even when you kick that, we still want to be kicking with the laces, as opposed to some guys will use the inside of their foot, especially if they play soccer. So, um, working on 45s, and that's a low trajectory, and we're trying to punch one like a Scud missile, and the intention with those is that they bounce three times. And I'll talk about that with tactics. Then we're going to do a bit of work on grubbers, what do you know about grubber kicking? If you've got a line in front of you and there's space in behind, what do we have to do to get a grubber through? Grubber in the gap. Grubber in the gap. That is true, but it's, it's no guarantee you get getting through. How do we know we're going to get a three? Fix the man so he's on his heading back. Yep. Can he put it through and then run past? Okay, so what you said is spot on. Bit of footwork to stick that guy, but we've got to get into the hole. So we stick him there, we get into the hole, and then when we punch the ball through, there's no legs. And so a little bit of work on footwork, three on threes. And I'll show you some examples of that. These are all Aaron Crudum, seeing we've talked a bit about him today. Um, Aaron, he's I've had a bit to do with him as a kid. So as a seven former at college, which is your last year at high school, uh, he could barely kick a ball because he ran everything. The team he played in, they run it from everywhere. So. It, so it hasn't been a natural part of his game, it's something he's worked really hard on. Here is um, here's an example of pin kicking. Why, why is that a really good option? Everyone's going backwards, you're going forward. Yep. Sorry? You give them the wing a chance at it. If, it. if it goes to touch, it goes to touch, it's their line out. Where they're at, they're going to kick it back to touch and get the ball back in anyway in a couple of phases. Yep, all of those things. Look at game situation. Lead by six. Uh, three minutes on the clock. <coughs> putting them down the corner, forcing them to play from deep. So, yeah, we could have run that, but if you get it wrong and you get it turned over, you maybe you lose the game. So, that's against Aaron's instincts a couple of years ago, uh, but trying to control the game with your boot, <coughs> tick slides into it, the ball goes further out, and so by the time we get, we get to set a defensive line out against that. Okay, so that's, that's an example of pin kicking. Um, here's the 45, so kick it across the body a little bit, low trajectory. Uh, it's pretty good punch, wasn't it? Happy with that? <laughs> Happy with that? Okay, so uh, that was a pretty good one. This next one is an example of grubber kicking. Now, it's not your classic example. Um, I could have I could have showed you a couple more that Jaren's put through that we've scored off. Um, but the reason for this one, he's, he's kicking from nine. And what had happened in this game was our halfback got Simbin just before half time. And we ended up getting into a position where we knew this move would work, grubbering him behind from our nine, um, but our nine wasn't on the field. So all of a sudden we had to ten to go in there and we had to move blind wing to the ten because so and so. And uh, so Aaron had to be one to kick it, so he hadn't trained it at any stage. 
Uh, but <coughs> so remember, there's only 14, we're running a 14 on the field here. Cool. Alright, so the reason I'll show you that is we've got to think of, um, often people think of kicking as relieving pressure. But I don't want you to think of it ever as relieving pressure. Uh, kicking is a chance to regather and apply pressure. Uh, it's a chance to um, manipulate uh, your defences so that if they're racing up on you, you can put them behind so then they think, oh, last time I exposed this, so now I need to maybe not push it so quickly so now we get a chance to get it through the hands and so on. Um, but it's a real attacking weapon if, you, uh, if everyone's on the same page. So, I'll show you what I mean by that. So three bounces that I talked about, kicking the ball. If we can make it bounce three times, why would that be? What's, what's important about three bounce? Time, time to get your uh, team there. Yeah, so bounces three times. We're now organising our chase. We can put a bit of pressure on. We've got guys in position for a counter. Um, you obviously make a lot more yardage and so on. Um, attacking mindset uh, to apply pressure again. So I just talked about that. Um, Putting little nudges in places where we can regather it, catch it on the fall, uh, put a, apply some pressure, rather than kicking it out to, or just kicking it down to them because we think we're relieving pressure. It's false gold. So you're down in the defensive end and you hack it away and they catch it 50 metres out, now they've got position and they put you under pressure. And if they're a good counter attack inside, you can get stuck. Okay, so the last one, territory game situation was the example of Aaron's little pin kick. So at times we'll kick to try and get ourselves in good parts of the field, maybe kick because we want them to kick back so then we can counter off it, um, or maybe we're kicking to just try and run the clock down, keep the pin down in their corner, so on and so on. Okay, so here's an example of what I'd call an attacking kick. You might think it's risky. In fact, if he'd done it better, it would have been spot on. But so roll behind us, that's our fullback. He chips one across to a winger. They end up kicking it out. So we got a line out, 25 metres out. Now what that was designed for was to chip across now we're going to catch it on the full. And we thought if he catch it on the full, the fullback will press up, inside ball, and one of our guys should go the length of the field. But the kick wasn't probably as accurate as it needed to be. But what that is, that's an attacking mindset. Uh, looking for ways we can expose your defence. What it means next time, like I said, that winger won't press up so hard because he's worried about us kicking them behind him, so we've got a chance to go through the hands. Okay. Right? <coughs>